Welcome back to the final race of our little 1991 Formula 1 season in Automobilista 2. Even though the championship is already decided in favor of Nigel Mansell, we still are very much looking forward to today and that is for multiple reasons. There still is a battle for run-up in the championship going on between Senna and Patrese and we're here at Adelaide today, one of the most popular street circuits on earth. And adding to that already promising setup, we have torrential rain falling on the track. We will be going into today's race driving as Nelson Piquet, for whom this will be the last race of his very successful F1 career, including multiple world championships. With a good result here, we could help him to finish fourth in the championship. So, without further ado, let's look at the starting grid for today's race. And we have Alain Prost starting from pole position and alongside him is Gerhard Berger, quite the unusual first row for this season. Ayrton Senna then in third, alongside him is Jean Lazy and Nelson Piquet ourselves we start from fifth. Uh, Roberto Moreno, uh, our teammate alongside us, in sixth. And then we have the two Williams with Patrese and Mansell, Modena, Martini, Bertrand Gascho, Stefano Modena, Andrea De Cesaris, Johnny Herbert. Gianni Mobidelli, Ivan Capelli, Martin Brundl, Thierry Boutsen, Mika Hekinen, Eric Comas, Mauricio Guzelmin, Mark Blondel, Aguri Suzuki, Eric Berna, Alex Caffey and Michele Alboreto starts from 26th and last. And here we are in our grid spot in P5 and it's lights out. And away we go for the final race of the 1991 Formula 1 season. We are already overtaken by our teammate Roberto Moreno who gets a blistering start off the line. Through that first chicane we go here. And now towards turn 4 called Wakefield. This is where we might see some overtaking action later on. But uh, actually we don't see too much as the spray is really, really... Uh, heavy here, trying down the inside, also defending from uh, Ricardo Patrese just behind us. Um, here it's a little bit better with the spray. Uh, the forecast is that it will rain throughout the race, so it won't stop and we won't be dry, uh, running on a dry track at all in this race. The original 1991 uh, Australian Grand Prix was one of the wettest Formula 1 races ever and it was uh, red flagged and not restarted after, I think, lap 19 or something. We will go the full half distance as we usually do in these races and oh towards the hairpin we go for the very first time and we even make it round the outside of our teammates. They were bunching up there really badly so we gain a spot through this back into P5 where we started this race as well and let's just focus on keeping the car on track because we already know this is going to be a race of attrition. A, because it usually is uh, with these kinds of cars that, uh, well, not as reliable as today's modern Formula 1 cars. Uh, and of course the conditions as Senna tries it against a lazy there into the chicane and both of them not uh, very fast We almost tried to get a move done on Senna and now behind us. This is what happens Moreno hits the wall spins across the track and takes out Ricardo Patrese these two out of the race already in lap 2 Nigel Mansell gets held up behind these two as well and uh, lap later we come by uh, the scene of the accident once more and Ricardo Patrese is still standing alongside the track blocking the road somewhat uh, catching out Alesi and Senna and we take that to advantage as we make a move against Senna we move up another spot and are now running in P4 but Senna is really the fastest man on track right now he really excels in these conditions and so he does today as well as he's really putting the pressure on us you can see him in our rear mirrors he is all over us and now as we go towards brewery bend he's trying it down the insides backs out of it but now on the long brabham straight towards the hairpin the circuit's best overtaking spot. He is alongside us. 
but he backs out of it once more later on the brakes pays off so Senna not taking any unnecessary risks right now he as well as ourselves knows that this is a race of attrition We've already seen that two top guys with Moreno and um, Patrese already out. Nigel Mansell dropped down the order, but he's fighting his way up. I can already tell you that. We will see him uh, in a minute. But now, yeah, let's still look at our fight with Ayrton Senna. And now he is late on the brakes into the chicane and takes us very cleanly there. So down in fifth once more for ourselves as Nelson PK here. And already uh, Senna is hunting down Jean Lazy, but now there's some lapped traffic in the way and kind of holding them up there. So Senna with a very poor exit out of the uh, brewery bend. So we move up back into P4. Ooh. Oh, a Lazy made it past Berger. Now Berger is ahead of us. It's a Ferrari 1-2 now with Prost leading ahead of Alesi. Berger third. We're now running in fourth. And this is a Leighton house there in our way. There is Ivan Capelli. Mauricio Guzelman is already out of the race. He retired on the opening lap. Senna around the outside there. Very daring move behind us. That's Bertrand Gasho now as well. So he is getting involved in uh, this situation. Now let's try if we can retake Senna into the chicane. Capelli not really yielding to let us pass, but of course it's also hard to see whether the car behind us, whether you're actually racing it or it's a lapped car. Oh, and we hit Senna in the rear, and that unfortunately has caused some damage to the front of our car. So, let's see how it is. Oh, but it doesn't feel good. Doesn't feel good at all. I mean, we are faster than Capelli ahead of us, but he's like really, really slow. And at the end of this lap, we decide to pit as we are really realizing that that has put a lot of damage on our car. Well, and the recovery job is already underway for Nigel Mansell, who is up into P6, just behind Gasho and Senna. And look, more lap traffic! Mansell ma moves past Gasho and Senna. And in the background, Modena crashed into the rear of Bertrand Gasho. Gasho now, uh, after that incident, retires from this race. So another points runner uh, retiring. And Modena had to pit and fell way down the order. So, Mansell now up into P4. Well, an hour race is also now a recovery job. Let's see if we can do as good as a job of it as Nigel Mansell has done so far. We are in P19, just behind Eric Berner in the uh, Lola Ford run by the LaRousse team. And we can go a lot quicker. Our car is now fully fixed, so we don't have any issue after that incident we had there with Ayrton Senna. So we are totally fine. Let's see what we can do here on that part of the track, despite it's still raining. There is kind of a bit of a less wet line, at least. Now here's a lot of uh, spray as well on the Brabham Straight. And now we're coming up to the hairpin. Very late on the brakes, sliding into the corner, but getting it stopped in time. Making it past Eric Berner. That was very risky, but it paid off so that we don't lose too much time running with these guys here. A little bit later, we arrive at the rear of Alex Caffey in the footwork. And that was kind of an easy job here. Oh, and more cars struggling. That was a Ligier spinning out there. So, more and more chaos here on this track, and we're really moving up the order without doing really much. Absolutely chaotic race, and, and there is cars spinning out and retiring everywhere, and cars also pitting, so we don't even have to work too much to move up spots. Oh, there is another... That must have been Capelli once again. Capelli out of this race now as well. Cars going into the pit lane ahead of us. Now we're just behind. I think it is the Brabham. 
of who is it? Mark Blondell should be. And the longer we are running pretty well here and getting more and more confident despite these conditions, the more likely it gets that we will actually fight for points uh, towards the end of this race. We will look at what's going on in the front, don't worry. But for now, let's focus on what we're doing here. There's a tire lying in the uh, runoff of that corner. So, so absolute chaos in this race. If I, I couldn't even show you everything that was going on, every incident with every backmarker or midfield racer. We're just focusing on ourselves and what is happening at the front because there is going so much going on that it's really hard to capture everything. Now let's see. Oh, uh, was a little daring. I felt like we were running wide onto the high curb and that would probably launch us into the air. But now that's a good exit. With the slipstream, we're getting closer and closer to that Brabham. Late on the brakes, a little too late on the brakes, but still we managed to rather slide past Mark Blondell. So that's brilliant news. Let's see if we can stay ahead of that car. Looks fine, we should be fast. We are actually one of the fastest cars on track right now. So after that pit stop, we really gained confidence and pace. So that is really good. And now we have a clear track ahead of us. And actually, we are up into P7 already. So 12 points ahead of us, Pierluigi Martini is the first car in the points. Nigel Mansell continuing to make moves all the while. He has arrived at the rear of Gerhard Berger and they are just trying to lap uh, Mika Hakkinen in the Lotus and Mansell tries to use these to his advantage. Three wide, they're going down the Brabham straight towards the hairpin and Nigel Mansell moves past Gerhard Berger and the McLaren absolutely fantastically executed move by the newly crowned world champion Nigel Mansell. Well, and Alain Prost has had quite a quiet race so far. He is now going in for a pit stop for fresh tires. So Alesi takes the lead. And a little bit later, Alesi also made a pit stop. And now Nigel Mansell, who has been in the lead in the meantime, also comes in for fresh tires. Ayrton Senna, all the while, stayed out, moved past Gerhard Berger, who also made a pit stop. And here he is, now taking the lead of the Australian Grand Prix. And ourselves, we are still in 7th, but now we are close to Gerhard Berger, who also made a pit stop. This is the running order right now, so Alesi also ahead of uh, Alain Prost. So some changes after the pit stops. Very interesting changes as well. And just ahead of us, you can... I don't think you can really see it, but that is Gerhard Berger, the car in 6th. So if we manage to move past that McLaren, we're up into the point scoring positions once again after that earlier collision with Senna and then a pretty lengthy pit stop to change our front wing. So, we might still be able to salvage something out of that final race for Nelson Piquet, the real final race for him, as he won't race in Formula 1 ever again after the Australian Grand Prix 1991. We are getting closer towards the hairpin bars. Our very late braking doesn't work against Gerhard Berger. Of course it doesn't. He has a much better car than like the Brabham or the Lola Ford. Uh, on whom we were trying this move before. So. That's gonna be a tougher nut to crack. But it's not impossible. And lap traffic always is an issue here. We've seen this before. Nigel Mansell has uh, made multiple moves involving lapped traffic. And using this to his advantage. Because it's really hard. A, it's a street course. And it's hard to let people by. B, the rules for letting people by wasn't, weren't that strict in the 90s. And um, yeah, it's hard for backmarkers to make out if the car behind you if you're actually racing it or if it is a lap ahead so that's really really tough 
uh, to realize in these conditions. And as we speak about it, there is a lapped car. I can't see who it is. Oh, it's a Ligier. And already we are alongside Berger. Now towards Brewery Bend. And we have the much better line on the inside. We don't beg out of it. And so we kind of force Berger to give up the position. And we are up into six in the points. And now uh, we have the task of actually making it past the back marker to not get re-overtaking. But that's looking good. Late on the brakes into the hairpin. And we move past Berger and a lap ahead of that Ligier. Well, and this is how it stands right now. We moved up into fifth as Martini also made it into the pits and on some standing water we spin out. Oh, we make a little bit of contact with uh, the wall there. That hasn't damaged our car. We didn't even lose a spot. The car that made it past was a lap down. But, oh my, what a short shocker there on the main straight. The track is so wet, you can't just spin out while going straight. It's absolutely soaked, the conditions here right now. And we are not the only car to experience that, as we're just looking at uh, Mika Hakkinen, who is a lap down, of course. And also, he ends up breaking, loses the car, and just spins past the pit entry. So, unfortunately for him... Uh... He also had to pit after that. And look at that! Jean Lazy is trying to take Ayrton Senna for the lead. And more lap traffic is involved as there is a Minardi just ahead of them. This is like almost a perfect copycat move of what Mansell has done before against Berger. And now a Lazy is alongside Senna. This is still not over, but a Lazy has. Pull the head, a lazy leads the Australian Grand Prix. Now, can he clear that Minali of a Pierluigi Martini? Ah, oh, you can see Alan Prost is also just behind them, and Nigel Mansell as well. And there goes a lazy down the inside of the final corner. Senna pulls with him. Can Senna now take back the lead of this race? Or is Alesi able to defend? Mansell back into the pit lane. Okay, that's a bit odd, but uh, another pit stop for Nigel Mansell in the background. You were able to see that from P4. Senna just behind Alesi, but Alesi defending well. So, the French Sicilian might actually be able to win his first race here in a Ferrari. And we're going towards the uh, final phase of this race. Just under 10 laps to go now. And we are kind of settling now with our P5. Behind us, the cars are way down. Ahead of us, oh, and we have an oil leak. And just accelerating out of brewery corner on the Brabham straight. Our engine completely blows. We lose the braking somewhat. Crash into the wall. And, uh, well... We are out of this race, unfortunately. We've been doing so well, kept it largely out of the walls, and then an engine failure catches us. And we weren't the only high-profile late retirement in this race, as we're just looking at Alain Prost running in a comfortable third. Well, and all of a sudden, also, going through Brewery Bent, he just loses power and grinds to a halt. Absolutely dramatic finish now to the Australian Grand Prix and Mansell therefore moves up into P3 and into the podium spots. And further drama for Ferrari with just two laps to go. Jean Lazy comfortably leading that race now. He pulled away from Senna but then also his engine gives in with just two laps to go. A Lazy retires from the race lead and that has put something very interesting going on. So it's just six cars running. Alesi is still uh, being uh, said it, he's running in third. He will drop down to fifth by the end of this race. And these guys here are the last ones on track. They are three laps down, but they are actually fighting for a point now. And impressively, that is Michele Alboreto in the footwork. We've not seen anything of the footworks apart from maybe when we lapped them. They were by far the slowest car this season. They 
pretty much always locked out the last row on the grid, but now they're actually fighting for a point here in the final race of the season. Whoever finishes ahead of these two will finish in sixth and therefore get one point. And also, very impressively, that is Mika Hakkinen in the Lotus here. He has spun out, we've seen that. He went three laps down, but he's not given up and he might even salvage something from this race. So, it really was a race of attrition. Only six cars running right now. A lazy retiring from the lead. Senna now leading out of Patrese. Impressively, Pierluigi in the Mart Martini in the Minardi running in third for a podium spot. But now let's focus on the fight for the final points. Oh no, Senna Hekkinen is going for it. Alberto, can he hang on to it around the outside? No, he can't. Oh, how unfortunate for the footwork team. They're starting the final lap of the race now. And Hekkinen has taken sixth away from Alberto. And here is the man leading the race. He is now fully in charge of it, coming down the hairpin for the final time. Ayrton Senna, he has had a very, very disappointing season. We were expecting him to fight for the championship, to lead the championship charge. He was kind of dominated by Nigel Mansell, though mostly through no fault of his own, but at least he finishes this season on high. Ayrton Senna wins a spectacular Australian Grand Prix 1991 at Adelaide. Congratulations to the Brazilian in the McLaren. A very well-deserved victory. Very unfortunate for Jean Alesi though. And let's look at the results of today's race. Ayrton Senna wins out of Nigel Mansell, the only two cars on the lead lap. Pierluigi Martini, a sensational podium for the Minardi team in third, a lap down. Marc Blondel, amazing points for the Brabham team as well. He finishes fourth. Jean Lazy still classified in fifth, despite his uh, engine failure towards the end of this race. Mika Hakkinen, we've seen that, has just taken sixth for the final point. Very unlucky for Michele Alvarez. Retro. That would have been an amazing feat to pull off for the footwork team. Um, now let's see what this means for the Drivers' Championship. Nigel Mansell, of course, still in the lead. He has won the championship already in Suzuka. Senna now moves up into second. Then we have the Cesaris Martini. He moves up into ninth. Impressive feat for the Minardi driver. Then we have uh, Roberto Moreno. Hakkinen just ahead of Mark Blondel. Blondel moves up into 12th. And then we have Gasho and Brondel, the final point scorer. For the Constructors' Championship, that means Williams have won it, but we already knew that. Uh, McLaren uh, finished second, Ferrari third. Then we have Benetton in fourth. Jordan in fifth. Very impressive for the very new team here. Minardi moves up into sixth. What a great uh, year for the Italian Minos. And then we have Lotus and Rebham tied in 7th and 8th with 4 points each. So, that has been it for the classic F1 season 1991. And what a way to finish it off. Of course, the championship was already decided. But what a race this has been. I think this was one of the best races uh, we ever had uh, in this series. So many plot twists, so much chaos. Uh, such an amazing result. Of course, classic racing in Automobilista 2 will continue but for the next season it won't be formula one racing i have let you vote in the community tab and you decided that you wanted to see me do the 1998 cart season so i'm very much looking forward to this we'll start with the race at long beach in two weeks time and of course uh, keep out Keep an eye out for the uh, next poll where you will be able to decide which season will follow after Card 1998. So, uh, yeah, subscribe to not miss anything on this channel. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you all the next time. Until then, goodbye.